I have a chunky Ableton rig that runs backing tracks out of multiple outputs as MIDI control. The SPDSX is sampling through it via MIDI. I've also controlled it by foot switch and set list control and time code and it just goes on and on. If you've seen any of my Ableton videos on this channel, then you would have seen this Ableton rig. But can I recreate this in Logic? As a quick heads up, if you just want to see the final product, you can see it in the link down below. So the big question is why would you want to do this? And this is because Logic is getting more and more powerful and not only that, but a lot of people will buy a Mac and they'll get Logic with it because that's the logical, I see what they've done, th I see what they've done there, but that's the logical thing to do. You get the DAW, if you've never used a DAW before, for the computer you're using. And then you discover, oh my band wants to use backing tracks and now I have to learn Ableton. And that might not actually be the case anymore with Logic. So I'm gonna try and create my Ableton rig as, as close as I can in Logic. So here's what the current Ableton rig looks like and it is, yeah quite quite a lot going on. Uh, there's two hours worth of show, including stuff like emergency instruments. So if someone can't make it or something happens, I can just unmute their instrument. It's got a little bit of time code in there that I'm starting to experiment with. Uh, it's got SPDSX automation. And yeah, my goal is to replicate this. So we're gonna look at stuff like the click MIDI, the cues MIDI, all of the stems, the SPDSX, because I'm sampling it from here in Ableton rather than on the SPDSX itself. In this case, the SPDSX is just a MIDI controller, which makes this even more interesting. It's then got to have six outputs via the Focusrite 8920, which is probably the most simple part of this. And yeah, it's also got to auto stop at the end of every track because I run Able Set with this so I can control my set list. So yeah, let's see if we can uh, build this in Logic. Let's start with a blank Logic project. In all honesty, I'm not going to create the full two hour show because we will be here all day and I'll probably get hit by copyright. So I'm going to demo this with three songs from Epidemic Sound, but I'm going to create the same features that would be in, in the real thing, even though this is real, but does that make sense? That makes sense. So let me drag in the first stems. This is what the song sounds like. <laughs> And it, it carries on. Anyway, I'm gonna group all of these together and I'm gonna put them all in a summing stack because that's fancier and that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna name it stems because I want them all to go to the same output because these are just gonna be like outputs one and two to the front of the house and they're gonna be my backing tracks. And this is out of six outputs. Then I'm just gonna create a marker right at the beginning. I'm just gonna name it song one because I'm that creative. And then I'm gonna change the tempo data and I believe this song is 105. Uh, yeah. And then try and match to the click. Well, that was easy, maybe. <laughs> Right, there we go, 105, I nailed it. I, it's because I already know it was 105 BPM, but I like it when people record stuff and you don't have to move it and shift it. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly repeat this for all three songs. So we've got three songs and yeah, three different tempo things. So now that I've done all of that, let's create a click track. And I'll be honest, I've skipped ahead a little bit, but let me show you what's happened. So I've added song one, song two, song three. Apparently song three is not in capitals, but that's fine. I also did start to put the arrangement in, but I quickly gave up and I don't know how to remove that one. So uh, yeah, we've just got intro, but we can move past that. These two little guys, I'll get to in a minute because they're really cool, but I've renamed it multi-track backing tracks because that's what they are. And then I've added the click. So this is now what we're gonna be creating. So this is made with a drum machine designer and I've just grabbed four different click sounds. So you've got accent, fourth, eighth, sixteenth, but the volume isn't up. And the reason why I've done four of these is because then I can change the volume of them. The only other thing I've created is just one bar of MIDI, which just has the MIDI for that note. So that's nothing crazy. I've just done that four times and I've looped it because A to check it works and yeah. So that then means when I bring up the mixer, I then have the click as a whole and then I have accent fourth, eight, sixteenths. So if I just hit play, let me solo the click. Let's say I don't want any eighth notes. Let's say I want to be a menace and only have eighth notes. Why would you want that? Or 16th, that's what they sound like. Or 
that's the perfect click right there. It's just accent and 16th notes. But that's why, it's because I can change the volume throughout the backing track with automation. So say if I wanted no eighth notes in the second song, but I did in the first and the third song, then I can just automate the volume data to show that. And then outside of that, when I've got all of this, I can then duplicate it to each song like that, loop it for the whole song-ish, and then uh, yeah, I can just close it and then it's just green bars on my project, which is quite nice because this is also why we adjust the MIDI tempo data, because it means that on this track, it's 105 and then it immediately jumps to uh, 116, and then jumps to 115. And it just basically means that we don't have to adjust anything. We just change the tempo and then everything works. Now, the last thing as well is this also means we can output it however we want. So for this, I would have this on bus five. And then what I would do is create another one that is the cues. So the one, two, three, four, and then that can go to another output. And this is where you can now see how I'm using six different outputs in Ableton. For now though, I'll keep it like that because the cues track is exactly the same as the click track. And if you are wanting this, then again, the link is down below so you don't have to faff with any of this. Let's talk about the SPDSX. So in Ableton, I use the SPD as basically a MIDI controller and I run all my samples in Ableton because they changed throughout the set. And it's just one of those things where when I was building it, it was right there. And then I can just output it through all one thing rather than fussing about, well, here's my backing track outputs and here's my SPDSX output and here it goes through a DI box. I can just put it all in one loom and it's great. So I'm gonna create software instrument track and then add a drum machine designer to it. I'm just gonna remove Ah, clear pad, not delete. Oh, apparently that's just there forever. Anyway, this is significantly more difficult than what I did. Anyway, I'm gonna bring in my own samples and hope that it changes that because uh, that's deeply unsettling and confusing me. So let's say I'm gonna have this one, which is uh, one of my favorite samples in the world from the YQ2K pack from Make Pop Music YouTube channel. Love what they do. Sounds great. And then I'm gonna bring in my favorite clap sound easy as that. So the key thing here will be assigning this to, well, on the SPDSX to this. And there's kind of two options here. So straight away, you can see it's already having MIDI sent to it, but it's just the wrong place. So I could either bring those samples over to where I want on the pad, or I can change the MIDI on the SPDSX. I'm just gonna bring this over. Actually, can I do it there? I might be able to do it there. I might've discovered something. G, G sharp three. So can I change that input? to G sharp three. And then does that, perfect. Very quiet, but it works. And then same thing, G three, there we go, who'd have thought? And so I'm gonna change the input to this to G three. Is that gonna be like? Now we have a sampler. So if I wanted to automate that to different sounds, what I would then look to do is actually use program change data and use a different kit on the SPDSX. Because unfortunately on Ableton, how I do this is with an instrument rack and then put a drum rack within that, because then you can have loads and you can just change between them all. Whereas you can't do that with Logic from my knowledge. So I would then just send a program change to the SPDSX, which has another bank with different MIDI notes. And then I'll just assign another kit with different MIDI notes to that. It's a little bit of a work around, but it does work. So we've got click, we've got tracks, we've got the SPDSX working. I also want to use the SPDSX to control logic. So what I'm gonna do is go into key commands, edit assignments, you get this lovely menu up, and then I'm just gonna go play, there it is, play, learn no assignment, there we go, stop, learn no assignment. Obviously hit the pad that I want. I'm also gonna go, go to next marker. Can I do that? Let's find out if that works. Learn no assignment, next, learned. Go to previous marker. Okay, this is getting interesting. So does that mean I can now hit play? Stop, next marker. Yeah, next marker, previous, previous. Okay, this is cool. That means I can now control Ableton with the SPDSX, so I can add a foot switch to my SPD and use that as a play button, which is amazing. I've got all the click set up. I've got the track set up. I've got the, wait, does that, does that mean? Yes, so I'm both controlling Logic and sampling through Logic as well, which is really cool. Let's move on to these little guys here, which I'm a big fan of, and that's an auto stop and go to next. So when it goes to the end of the song, naturally what Logic will do is we'll just carry on. I don't want that, so it does this. I started it way too soon, and 
Song 2. So as you can see, it stops it, goes to the next one, and that's using the IAC driver, and it took me forever to work that out, but there we go. I did it, and it's really, really cool, and now I can just literally just copy, let's go to the end of this song, paste, and then obviously the end of this song, but there's no song after that, paste. I did it too soon, but it worked. It worked. And then when I'm ready, I can hit play on the SPDSX. That's pretty cool. I didn't ever expect Logic to be able to do this. That's that's really cool. The last thing, which I haven't figured out yet, is set list control. So in Ableton, I'll do something like Able Set, and that works really, really well. But I don't think something exists like that for Logic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a touch OSC patch that means you can just tap on each song. It's, it kind of works, kind of doesn't, because it basically means before every gig, you then have to reorder all of the buttons to whatever you want, or it's just on a big grid of every single song, you have to tap the song that's next. But it's a workaround. It means at least you can leave this Logic master template as is, uh, and it works. But yeah, I'm gonna leave that with me. Leave that with me. I think what you should go do though, is check out the link down below so you can download this template with everything, including the auto stop, go to next, SPDSX kit, all the clicks and everything like that. I've included some free samples as well, which is really, really cool. And yeah, download it and just, just have fun with it. What is also good as well is that when you do download it is that I will send updates. So when I figure out set this control, when I make this touch OSC thing, you'll just have it at this free update. So yeah, I think you should go do that. So um, yeah, I'll see you there.